the wall. So usually it's a little decorative. It's a water fountain. It's a little decorative, you know, fountain with a little spigot coming out and water's constantly running out of there. And you can go and fill your bucket up and do your dishes with it or something if you don't have running water. Or a lot of people just go and they drink it. And it actually tastes really good. But the reason it tastes really good is because lead makes stuff taste sweet. There's some cyanide shit somewhere. Oh, it's over there. That actually tastes sweet. That's why kids eat it when it's in paint and it's chipping off. That's why lead water tastes good. It actually makes things sweet. But the reason it gets in the air is because of gasoline. It's not so bad anymore. Carbon monoxide. Now I'm going to go into detail of each one, but I'll go through this quickly because we don't want to stop. Carbon monoxide is an odorless and colorless gas reduced, released by the combustion of fossil fuels. Carbon monoxide. I'm not talking about dioxide. Monoxide. Dioxide is more important with global warming. Monoxide is more important as one of the worst air pollutants. Carbon monoxide binds irreversibly with hemoglobin in blood. So your red blood cell it kicks off the oxygen that's supposed to be there. So it attaches to the iron in your blood cells at a microscopic level, kicks off the oxygen, and it won't allow the oxygen to rebind. And so it binds irreversibly. And so you suffocate, you die. And your brain doesn't register that it's dying or that it's not getting enough oxygen. So you just keep breathing it, and you just kind of fall asleep. Yeah. When you say irreversibly, does that mean it's permanent? Yeah. Until the red blood cells die? Or yeah, pretty much. I mean, I'm sure there's something they can do to fix it. Like, I know if you've got carbon monoxide poisoning, they'll open, like, a pressure chamber. Not because you're getting the bends or anything like that, and they need to pressurize your blood, but because they want to pressurize you with oxygen, pushing as much oxygen that's available in the atmosphere. So they pressure, they put you in a pressure chamber that's filled with oxygen so that the remaining blood cells that you have all are carrying an oxygen molecule. Because you're not 100% efficient. You're not all, not every red blood cell is going to get, when you breathe in, is going to get filled up with oxygen or whatever, you know, gas is there. So that they want you to carry more oxygen in your red blood cells so they'll put you in like a pressurized oxygen container tank for a while until you until basically those red blood cells that are carrying the carbon monoxide die off okay so 60 percent out of all carbon dioxide is released by automobiles don't turn your car on in the garage that's the most important thing with the door closed. All right, lead. Lead is an air pollutant as well as being found in solid materials like pipes, makeup, and paint. Um, the reason they put it in makeup and paint is because lead actually makes everything brighter. So leaded, it doesn't change the color of anything, but it makes whites whiter. It makes, if you have a red with lead in it, a red paint, or red makeup, a lipstick or something, it's going to make that color brighter. So it brightens up colors. That's why they want to add it to makeup and they want to add it to paint. So it makes the colors brighter. Um, it's a particulate. It settles into onto the land and ends up in our food chain. So we, if we eat an animal that has lead in it, then we get lead, just like the mercury. Um, it was primarily produced by cars which burned leaded gasoline. And there is, for the most part, maybe you could find it in small portions, there is no more leaded gas in the U.S. in normal gas stations. Uh, it's, it wasn't until two years ago, and I found this out, I forget who told me. It wasn't until two years ago that they stopped putting lead in boat gasoline stations. So if you had a boat and you took it to the gas, gas station, um, boats and filled up with gas and they did there wasn't a law that said you couldn't use lead in boat gasoline so but now they changed that about two years ago um, lead produces nervous system disorders and mental retardation and this is actually lead is why they think Rome 
came to an end because they figured that because people used to wear leaded makeup and drink out of leaded pipes and it caused nervous system problems and that's why they say Nero fiddled while Rome burned because he went crazy and a lot of these um, you know, Caesars went crazy because they had they were wearing a lot of lead makeup and they were drinking out of lead pipes and using lead crystal. Lead crystal is still made and still used. They just tell you not to keep you know whatever you're drinking in a lead crystal container like a decanter or anything because the lead will leach into your wine or your water or whatever you're drinking. But yeah, it causes nervous system problems. Ozone. So up high it helps us, down low it hurts us. Down low would be the tropospheric ozone and is a secondary air pollutant which interacts with nitrogen oxides, heat, UV, and volatile organic compounds. So when it does that, it's the major component of photochemical or brown smog, not to be confused with industrial or gray smog. So UV is one of the main things that causes photochemical smog, which is found in all cities around the world still, especially cities that are in hot, dry areas like China, cities in China, Beijing, I think it's one of them, Singapore, uh, L.A. used to have a lot of smog, but remember they have high EPA standards now, so the, LA, the smog in L.A. is getting reduced. But any place that's hot and dry with a lot of cars is going to have a lot of ozone in it, and it's going to have a lot of brown smog. Places with industry where it's wet have gray smog, but there's actually not a lot of places like that anymore. Nitrogen dioxide and sulfur dioxide. Nitrogen dioxide is a, prime, a secondary air pollutant. It's a component of photochemical brown smog also, and it's uh, part of acid precipitation. Remember, acid precipitation can be rain, sneet, sleet, snow, hail, fog. Fog is considered precipitation. Um, sulfur dioxide is a smelly gas which causes respiratory irritation. It's releasing the air through the combustion of coal. And sulfur dioxide is a secondary pollutant that, when combined with water, forms acid precipitation also. This one, nitrogen dioxide, is a little bit worse right now in the environment than sulfur dioxide because we have a lot of coal burning power plants, but the coal burning power plants have scrubbers and things like that to prevent sulfur dioxide and other bad stuff coming out of the smokestacks. Particulates and Clean Air Act. Particulates cause lung irritation. So when you, like right now, there's a lot of mold and Pollen. I don't know if mold is higher or pollen right now, but there's a lot of things that cause allergies in the air right now. When you breathe them in, they, if you're um, predisposed to having asthma, you, you'll probably get more asthma right now than usual or asthma attacks. Um, I know personally I have to take, I don't usually take allergy medication, but I've been taking Allegra for the past week because it's my eyes and my nose and my ears have been tearing up because of particulates like um, mold and uh, pollen and stuff. So right now there's a high amount of particulates in the atmosphere. All right, both lead and carbon monoxide of have, that should be have, decreased significantly since the 1970s due to removal of lead from gasoline. This is gasoline, not gas. gasoline. Carbon monoxide is reduced by catalytic converters which are required to be installed in car exhaust systems. I think, excuse me, I think they have newer things than that now. It used to be they have they had platinum platinum wires in them, and people would steal the catalytic converters for the platinum because that's valuable metal. I don't know. Do they still use catalytic converters? Yeah, they do. Platinum, palladium, there's, there's a couple other. But that's why they're like 300 ohms. Yeah. It's all those heavy metals. So both were a result of the Clean Air Act of 1970. So the lessening of carbon, lead and carbon monoxide are a result of the Clean Air Act of 1970. 
smog. There's industrial smog, which is called gray smog. There's two types, industrial and photochemical. Industrial is called gray smog because it's gray. It's formed by carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide, and from burning of coal and oil. And it's mixed with water to create a fog of gray sulfuric acid. So would gray smog be a primary or secondary air pollutant? Secondary. Because you've got primary ones in here, and then they mix with water or each other, and that makes it secondary. Uh, caused by many, caused it caused many problems during the Industrial Revolution in foggy, wet, cold England. So whenever you think industrial smog, you think gray. You want to think foggy, wet, cool areas. So if you think of like a Sherlock Holmes movie where they're always talking about the dense fog. It wasn't necessarily that it was fog, it was mostly gray smog. It was, in, it was because of the Industrial Revolution. So it, it was still foggy, but it was acidic fog. Um, photochemical smog, the reason I wrote this in yellow is because I want you to remember it kind of is brown. I, brown didn't show up, so yellow is the closest thing. So photochemical smog is also called brown smog, and it's formed by nitrogen oxides at X means it can be a one, two, three volatile organic compounds. So those are long carbon molecules that aren't held together very well. They break apart fairly easily. Uh, what's a, oh, here's a good question. What's a long, big carbon molecule that you know of that falls apart very easily? We talked about it. Close, yeah. CFCs, chlorofluorocarbons. That would be considered a volatile organic compound because it's a big organic compound molecule 